This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Hello everyone, welcome to episode uh, 70 something. Today is Bangarang Day. I've been building the Bangarang bots, I've been making terrain, uh, I made the game. It's time to play it. I think this is the episode that we've been building up to. I'm going to play Bangarang and I was trying to think who I should play with. I kind of want to beat Theo. Theo beat me last time at Tonks, so I asked Theo from Slimehouse TV to come back and play with me to beat him. Uh, whether that's going to happen or not, I don't know. This is going to be a video where I explain the rules for the game, a battle report of Bangarang in the Gutterlands. Um, there's got to be a more interesting intro than this. Let's just, let's just play it. Yep. What's cracking people? I'm Theo Kane from Slimehouse TV. Hope everybody is good and welcome to Rematch Day. So if you watch that game of Tonks that Bill and me had last year, you'll know that he took the L in that game and I know that he's never forgotten about it. So when he created this new game, Bangarang, we thought it was the perfect opportunity to have a rematch. Now, unlike that last game that we had where I created my own Tonk to go against Bill, this time I'm just gonna use one of his robots. He's made so many. If you've been watching his videos, you'll know that he's got like four different factions that he can use. And also, if you watch that big bot bash that we did recently, you'll know that I'm all robot -ed out. I've built more than enough robots for the time being. So I'm gonna use one of Bill's. And for this game, I'm gonna use his upper bot. Now we had a really good game, it was a lot of fun and I'm very much looking forward to you checking it out. So without further ado, sit back, make sure you're comfy and get strapped in for the bill making stuff and slime house rematch. Let's do this. Rule time, time for some rules, listen up. Right, so every bot gets to make three actions per turn. You can use any of these actions. You can shoot, you can move, you can shoot, reload, shoot. You can move, move, move. You know, I, I think you understand. So movement, uh, first of all, one action could be to move 90 degrees, just like that. What a helpful little illustration there. You can move forward up to four inches. At the end of your move action, you can do a 90 degree turn for free. Uh, you can also strafe three inches to the side, which is good for like poking out behind cover and you can use another strafe action to go back into cover. Obviously to keep the orientation, you can move backwards two inches and you can turn 45 degrees. We really went with the old uh, Space Hulk kind of movement rules because these robots are pretty clumsy, let's be honest. Shush, shush, shooting, time to shoot. Everyone likes a bit of shooting, especially if you're an American. This robot can shoot in a 90 degree arc wherever it's facing. Uh, and there is no range on the shooting. You can shoot across the whole board as long as you can see them in the line of sight. Now the bots are divided into four. You've got the front side, you've got the two sides, and you've got the back. Now it's harder to hit the front because of the, the more armor, I guess. And you need to get a six on a D6. Now to hit the side, you will need a five or more to hit them. And on the back, which is much easier, obviously, you need a four or more to hit. So you really want to try and flank the bots in this game. That's kind of what it's all about. And you can't shoot through terrain. I don't know why I felt like I had to uh, explain that. So climbing, in this game you can climb up on top of terrain. Uh, now this is a piece of terrain, we call these stacks because they're all kind of like a certain height. It's about the size of a bot um, and uh, this is one stack. Now one stack is obviously one stack high. If your bot climbs up one stack by using one climb action, they can shoot off of it and they get a little plus one to their shoot, which is pretty handy, especially shooting someone head on like that. Now you can add more stacks to your stack, you can have a two stack high stack of stacks uh, and when your bot climbs up there with another climb action he can shoot down and get a plus two to his shoot which is uh you know even more handy the only problem is when climbing up things these bots are pretty clumsy and uh, it doesn't take much to knock them down so if someone on the ground shoots a bot up on a bit of terrain the bot on the ground doesn't get a bonus to his shoot at all but if he does actually manage to hit then your bot is going to fall off of the terrain the closest edge and there i fell down two stacks uh, it's lose two hp per stack so that's four hp lost there so there's an advantage to climbing up higher but also a bit of a disadvantage balance now there are extra rules that I haven't really mentioned, so I thought I'd mention now. If your bot is within four inches of an enemy bot, then you plus one to your shoot roll. There's lots of ways of stacking uh, advantages to your shoot roll, as you would have noticed by now. Every time you shoot a gun, you have a reload token, which means before you can shoot again, you have to use an action to remove the reload token. And uh, well, you know, if you're doing melee, pretty much the same as shooting, you just don't really need to reload. You know, if you hit them in the back, still a plus four, but you don't have to reload, so it's pretty, pretty handy. Now hitting bots is pretty hard in this game, but if you ever do manage to hit a bot, you have to roll an extra dice. And if you get a five or a six, something interesting happens. Now the bot that gets hit has to roll a d20, and then some random thing happens off this sheet of random things. It's kind of chaotic and fun, which is why I like it. Uh, let's set up the table, shall we? 
So terrain for this game, we're not too strict on the rules for terrain. We like people to make whatever they like, but we like to use rectangular stacks because it makes it easier to calculate stacks. Now you need four rectangular pieces, uh, which you can orientate whichever way you like, four cube pieces, which you can put on top of other stacks and bridges that you can walk across. Now, obviously you don't need to do this. You can do whatever you like. And it is placed on the board by taking turns. You know, one person places one, the other person places another, whatever, let's just play the game. So this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Now Squarespace is a website where you go to make websites. Now if you have no idea how to make a website, you don't know how to do with a HTML, is it HTML? I'm not sure. And you just want to make a website about things like, you know, like a pickle website, for example. Like, yeah, yeah, like that. Like pickle perfection, that's it, Bill. Click there. Uh, if you just want to make a website that's quick and easy and clean and nicely designed, then go to Squarespace. Uh, I made this website in like, you know, it must have been like 0.5 seconds. Maybe a little bit longer, I'm not sure. But it was really easy and it looks pretty good. And I will add stuff to it at some point. But uh, yeah, if you want to make your own website, there's a sale going on at Squarespace. There's a little link down below. Go and have a look. So looky looky, I go first. I'm going to turn my bot, I think. I'm gonna move uh, a little way over there and I'm gonna see if I can see you through the crack and shoot you. I'm pretty sure I can. Let's have a little look. Um, dum de dum de dum Oh, there we are, look. Hello, hello, Theo. Yeah, I'm just gonna shoot you. I do need a six though from this range and a six. There we go, a six, nothing interesting happens, but that's fine, shooting you is interesting enough. Okay, so I'm just going to turn, move, and then move again. There's not really that much that I can do in this first round, other than try and close a bit of that distance between us both. So right now, this seems like my best option. So Theo hasn't got the range because he picked the flamethrower because he probably thought it looked cool or something. But while I've got uh, a little bit of time, I'm going to quickly climb up this thing and get a height advantage on him, I think. Uh, I mean, it's risky. I could fall down. But uh, my gun's got, you know, pretty much infinite range. I think I'll be okay. Okay, so if he's climbing, I'm moving. I'm gonna strafe, move, and then move again. Now, with Bill being up there, it means that he doesn't have to actually roll as high to hit me. And I've got a flamer, which means that I've gotta get close for him to be in range. Only thing now is I'm kinda of standing out in the open. Let's just hope that this little robot that he's made is not a very good shot. So I am currently two stacks high, which adds a plus two to my shooting roll. So hopefully I should get a few shots off him. So I'm gonna shoot a reload and I'm gonna shoot again. Uh, that's not good enough, Bill. That's, uh, you know, uh, and let's reload. Thank you, Bill. And let's try again. Uh, come on, I just, cut. I mean, really. I mean, let's, uh, I mean, yeah, it's fine. I'm still winning. Okay, yeah, cool. Bill's robot can't aim for Toffee. That makes me feel a lot better. Okay, so I'm gonna move, move, and then shoot. Really close that distance between us, cause I fancy a little beadbot barbecue. Ha, nice. That's what I'm talking about. That bot is officially burning, which means that his guy has now fallen off not one, but two stories of that terrain, meaning that he loses four hit points. Now we'll roll to see if anything interesting happens. Which it doesn't, but that's probably for the best. Okay, let's see how he gets out of this one. Your turn, Bill. All right, that hurt a little bit. Um... My pride is fine, it physically hurt. Uh, my pride's still intact. Uh, but what the flamethrower does is if you get hit, it's only one HP, but you still get set on fire, which means you have to put that thing out before you can do anything else. And uh, I just reloaded and I moved. I'm gonna keep a bit of distance.
Right, let's go. Reload, move, shoot. I want to try and burn some more holes in him while I've got him vulnerable. Ah, okay, well, I didn't build this robot, it's more of Bill's handiwork, makes sense that it would miss some of its shots, probably to be expected when you make it out of kids' craft form, but whatever, go on, you roll. Well, I thought I was a, a bad shot, and that's a flamethrower. Uh, that's okay, we'll let that go. Turn, shoot, and I'm gonna strafe. Uh, let's turn to shoot you from here. It's still a six head on, which hopefully I can get. And let's see if something interesting happens. And a six, and it does. And uh, Fear rolls a one, which means, let's have a look, dem de dem de dem Weapon offline, you must choose a weapon system or a hand to be unusable for the rest of the game. Oh dear. Uh, I figure he's gonna use that little blade. He's gonna lose that, because he's not gonna get anywhere near me anyway. Anyway, so you know, uh, he's got one little weapon, a little little flamethrower. Um, your turn, Theo. Okay, so that's me strafing right out of the way and doing a bit of climbing. I'm going to go up two stories, and I chose to lose my blade because I figured that the flame is just more valuable to me right now. Hopefully that's not a decision that I regret later. So it looks like Theo is trying to get the height advantage on me, which is quite funny. In real life, he's only four foot ten. But uh, I'm going to climb up and get my plus one to shooting as well. Now, I think Theo's weapon only has a range of six inches, which he could probably still hit me from here. But, you know, um, I want to give him a chance, really. You know, uh, he may be winning now, but let's let's just see in a minute. Okay, so it looks like he's chasing me for some reason, and I don't want him up here with me, so I'm gonna reload, shoot, and then reload. Okay, so that's Bill making stuff, once again cosplaying as the Wicker Man. This also means that he's gonna fall back down to the ground level, so altogether, if I'm right, I think that's you losing three hit points. Now we'll roll to see if anything interesting also goes down. Phoenix Protocol, okay, nice, that sounds promising. What does that mean, do you set on fire again? Oh, nice, I get some hit points back and a free action. Cheers, Fio. Right, okay, yeah, of course it does. Trust you to get that one. Remind me again, who made this game? So me getting shot off that little platform would have hurt quite a bit and I was on fire, but I had a free action which I used to get rid of the fire. But now I'm gonna move, I'm gonna shoot him off that little perch and I'm gonna move again. Hopefully I need a six, which, oh my, I've never got so many sixes in my life. And now something interesting happens and Theo rolls a five. Let's have a look, see what this is. Hopefully something bad. Awaken technology module, blah, blah, blah. He gets a weapon back. Basically he unlocks another weapon. I mean, he, he does take quite a bit of damage falling off there, but he's got his blade back. Look at that. That's just, that's just, uh, who wrote this game again? I think I'm going to blame Ben, actually. Yeah, I think Ben wrote that rule in. Okay, thank you. Very kind of you. I'll take my blade back. Not that it makes much difference. I've just lost six hit points. I've only got two left. So I'm going to move, move, and get into some close combat. Which I somehow miss. Do you know what, Bill? Next time, I'm building my own robot. So I've got to be careful, that blade takes two HP per hit. My hammer only takes one, but it manages to knock the person away in whichever direction I choose. Uh, so I'm gonna turn around, I'm gonna try and hit him back with my big hammer hand, uh, which I will, you know, maybe I'll get, no, okay. I didn't get it, I didn't get a six again. I mean, I was kind of, 
pushing my luck a little bit there, but uh So at this point, I'm just looking to smash this guy. I'm going all in with hits. And hopefully, they're all going to connect this time. Hopefully. Boom! You'll probably get all three now, wouldn't you? Ah! Pow! That's what I'm talking about. Do you know what? Forget what I said before. I'm actually starting to like this robot. So thankfully he missed one of those hits, it would have taken me down 6 HP, but he only hit me for 4 HP, which is still pretty bad. But I'm going to smack him in the face with my hammer and I get a 6, look at that, I knock him back 2 inches and nothing interesting happens, that's fine. Uh, now let's see if I can shoot him in the face and I don't, which is pretty unlucky, just pings off the armour there. But uh, I think I'm just going to reload and wait to see what he does next. Your turn for you. Right, okay, so I'm climbing, I'm shooting, and I'm reloading. Nice, I'm up high, so I have four hits. Now we'll see if something interesting happens. Whoa, a 20! That's gotta be good, right? Okay, Geo Tremor. The ground begins to shake and split. Clouds of dust are shaken off all nearby structures and the vibrations intensify. It just means we have to move D8 inches forward. You move two inches forward and I'm gonna move seven inches forward. What? Wait, fall off and suffer damage as usual. I've only got two hit points. One, one hit point for you. So I'm dead? Yeah, I, th I think you are. You know what, Bill? F this game. Bit rude. So there you have it, Bill finally won a game against me. Even though we all know it wasn't Bill that won, it was an earthquake, like, we know, you know. <laughs> but because he's won one and I've won one and we're one for one now, it kind of means that we need to have a rematch, which I'm sure we'll do at some point when Bill's obsessing over another game. We, we know what he gets like. But I'm also gonna be seeing him at Salute next week, so maybe we'll have a game there, or maybe we'll just have a fight. We could just fight. But in all seriousness, I did have a really fun time playing Bangarang. I would definitely recommend it if you've been thinking about picking it up. And I'm really looking forward to playing it again. M maybe creating my own bot this time. Creating my own robot. Because, yeah, bills aren't very good. So there we go. There's my battle report of Bangarangs in the Gutterland. And I, I beat for you. Um, I'll cut that bit out. 
But to be honest, it was extremely close. If there wasn't like an earthquake at the end, he probably would have beat me. Thanks, Faramar, for, uh, you know, providing that earthquake at the end there. Believe it or not, I haven't had a chance to play the game that much. I played it about five times with my son, uh, and he's beat me five times. Uh, th this is actually the first game of Bangarang I've actually won. Uh, so this is, you know, it was against the right person. Uh, you know, you can't beat your son too much, so they tell you. Um, but that is it for this episode. Uh, I hope to see you next episode. I think it could be... Depending on the order of these videos, it could be my Adepticon video or my Salute video where I have to make a pirate themed bit of terrain, which I have no time to do. So there probably will be time lapses coming up in the future, but don't, don't hold that against me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you would like to buy the game Bangarang in the Gutterlands, there's a link down below and we will be removing it from the, uh, the print on demand website soon uh, because, you know, it's starting to fizzle out a bit and we kind of want to build anticipation for the next expansion. Uh, so get it where you can, you know, they, they won't be around forever. Lots of stuff happening recently. Um, I swear I will build something soon. Thanks for watching. Comment, like, share it, all that stuff. Uh, I'll see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye. 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 Could I do a less annoying outro?